Hello, my name is Kelly Clark and today we will be discussing enzymes. Previously in lecture we were talking about ATP and um, just a reminder ATP is the energy molecule. Uh, but how do we get energy? So we get energy through our food, but how does our food become energy? So the short answer is through metabolism. Metabolism is the total of all chemical reactions in an organism and metabolism is then uh, broken down into two different classes, anabolism and catabolism. So anabolism is the synthesis of um, molecules, so making proteins, and catabolism is the opposite where we are breaking down molecules. Um, so this is what's happening whenever we're digesting our food. Um, for example, digesting carbohydrates, we're breaking that down to get our energy. So most of the metabolic uh, reactions in our body require assistance, and this assistance comes from enzymes. So enzymes are proteins that speed up these chemical reactions, so they act as catalysts. Um, and each living cell contains thousands of enzymes, and there are a bunch of different types of enzymes, and these different enzymes are specific to different chemical reactions. Um, but before we can understand um, how enzymes work, we need to understand activation energy. So activation energy is the amount of energy that is required to start a chemical reaction. So we have our reactants here, but we need this much energy to break the threshold and actually kickstart the reaction um, so we can get our products. So um, for example, we have our balloon, which is our reactants, and then we have we're going to fill our balloon up with water, and the water represents energy. And we want our final product to be the different. Um, we want our final product to be the broken pieces of the balloons. So after we fill our balloon up, we need to make sure it passes the threshold so it bursts. Um, now, without a catalyst or our enzyme. Um, we will need a lot more water to break this balloon. However, if we have an enzyme, we'll equate that to it being a water balloon. Um, so the balloon will be smaller, so it will require less water or less energy to um, start the reaction and to get our products. So here is the basically same ex example as the diagram before um, from our book, figure 5.7a. So on our x-axis, we have energy and we have our reactants. We'll call this sucrose and we're trying to get fructose and um, glucose um, from this sucrose. So in order to do that, we'll need a lot of energy because we don't have an enzyme here. So we're going to need a lot of energy to be able to break that bond to get these two different products. Um, however, if we have an enzyme, then our activation energy barrier um, is significantly lowered, so we won't need as much energy to break this bond to get the same products. So again, we have the two diagrams side by side, one without the enzyme and the other with the enzyme. So without the enzyme, you can see that we clearly need a lot more energy um, than what we would with the enzyme because the enzyme again lowers the activation energy barrier which thus which then helps us save um, energy so we can use it for different processes that are going on inside our body. So remember that enzymes are a type of proteins and proteins are made up of polypeptide chains and a good way to see those polypeptide chains are by using a ribbon model. So this is what a ribbon model looks like. It's showing the different types of polypeptide chains, which we will talk about more later on in the semester. And this specific model is showing the enzyme lactase. And lactase is very specific to its substrate. A substrate is a specific reactant molecule, so the active site of the enzyme fits specifically to a substrate, and then once the active site and the substrate bind together, the enzyme can then change its shape slightly. This is called an induced fit, so whenever the enzyme changes its shape, it's either binding molecules together to make one big molecule or it is breaking up one big molecule into several different molecules. 
So as we know, enzymes act as a catalyst, but the cool thing about enzymes is that they can function over and over again after they have been used. So if you've taken a chemistry class, you may have used a catalyst for your reactions in lab. These catalysts are used to speed up the reactions, and this is what the enzymes are doing. They're speeding up reactions, saving us energy. However, in our chemistry lab, we can only use the catalyst once. However, in our bodies, we can use our enzymes over and over again, and this is a cool um, key characteristics of enzymes. Um, many enzymes are also named after their substrate. However, enzymes end with the suffix ace or ASE. Um, so for example, lactose is broken down by lactase. So the enzyme would be lactase because it has that ASE ending. And then the substrate would be lactose. And in this case, it's a sugar. And sugars often have that OSE ending. So lactase is the enzyme and lactose is the substrate, which is a sugar. So here is a diagram of how um, enzymes actually work with their substrates. So here is our enzyme sucrase. So which would be the substrate for sucrase? You guessed it, it's sucrose. So sucrose has a very specific shape and sucrase has a very specific active site so as you can see here the active site looks like it would fit the substrate perfectly so after um, the enzyme finds the substrate or vice versa the substrate can then bind to the enzyme see how it fits perfectly in there and then the reaction occurs the enzyme slightly shifts its shape, it kind of pokes up here in the middle, breaking that bond, and we get two different molecules now, which would be glucose and fructose, and those products are released. And then our enzyme can start all over again and break down more sucrose, and then it just continues the cycle until our body tells it to stop. Um, so sometimes our enzymes don't always find its appropriate um, substrates, it can find enzyme inhibitors that can prevent these metabolic reactions from happening. And they prevent it by either binding to an active site on the enzyme or binding to a different site on the enzyme, but that then changes the active site so the substrate can no longer bind, thus causing the enzyme to not work. So here's an example. Um, of our enzyme with our substrate which is a nice uh, sphere and then our active site is kind of that half sphere so it can bind properly so this is just a normal enzyme and substrate binding normally like it should however um, here is an example of our enzyme inhibitor and one of the ways it inhibits um, is by using the substrate imposter so we have our inhibitor, which looks like, um, the bottom part looks like the substrate, so it can bind to the active site. However, it's the inhibitor, so that stops the substrate from binding, so it can't either break down or make new molecules. So this is the example of substrate inhibitor. And then our next example is whenever the inhibitor binds near the active site, which then changes what the active site actually looks like. So we have our inhibitor binding somewhere else on the enzyme and that shrinks the active site so the substrate can no longer bind and the enzyme can no longer do its job. So this inhibitor is inhibiting the enzyme from doing its work by changing the shape of the active site. And here is our overall picture. We have how our enzyme is supposed to work properly with its substrate. We have the inhibitor by substrate imposter, and then we have inhibitor by binding to a different spot and then changing the shape of the active site. So um, some products of reaction may actually inhibit the enzyme that's required for its production. So we call this feedback regulation, and this is how our body prevents us from wasting precious resources. So for example, um, sucrase is our enzyme that breaks apart the sugar sucrose, 
but there's also an en enzyme that makes sucrose. That enzyme is called sucrose synthase, and sucrose synthase, um, we we need to make sure that we have these feedback regulations because if we're breaking down all of this sucrose, then we don't want to be remaking the sucrose from that products. So this is how um, we can inhibit some, this is how our body inhibits some enzymes as well. And many beneficial drugs work by inhibiting enzymes. So a couple of examples, penicillin is an antibiotic that is produced by a fungus and um, this antibiotic blocks the active site for some enzymes in the bacteria that is used for making their cell walls. The cell wall is a protective layer around the bacteria, so um, if it can't maintain its cell wall, then it can't um, protect itself properly, basically. So that's how penicillin kills these types of bacteria. Um, ibuprofen inhibits um, an enzyme that is responsible in sending pain signals and um, another way that um, enzyme inhibitors are beneficial is they're used in many cancer drugs and they inhibit enzymes that promote cell division and rapid cell growth and cell division is cancer so um, enzyme inhibitors um, can be beneficial with that too. Um, so this is the end of today's lecture, and if you have any questions, feel free to come to me after class or during my office hours or shoot me a quick email. I'd be happy to answer any of your questions. Thank you.